Okay, this is the <clears throat> feedback for composition four. Um, so, quite nice idea for the track. I mean, you've thought about tempos, kind of trip hop kind of thing, which is a good good tempo for this. I believe you probably signed the tempo because of this sample, which is exactly eight bars long. Um, but we'll get to that in a minute. So, first thing, in your main bus, you've used a limiter, compressor, and EQ, which is essentially crushing the output. You see that purple line? That's the amount of date, um, gain reduction that you're putting onto the mix. Now that is a big no-no. You're not really meant to use a compressor at all or limiter at all on your output. So I'm going to take them off to begin with and let's see what we got. Right. So the mix is all over the shop. The main problem at this stage is that you can't really hear what's going on. So you're going to be making decisions about arrangement based on inf um, faulty information because you can't really don't really know what's actually happening. So we're going to have to go through it bit by bit. So you've used this heartbeat, right? You can see here you've got a huge amount of gain on it, and we've used a large amount of shelving EQ here to boost the, the low end. Um, let's just turn that off. Let's turn the click off. Right, so what you could do with this is first of all, you could normalize it. So if you double click into it like that and go to file, we can normalize the actual level of it to make it as loud as we can. There we go, it's a bit louder. That's nice. Um, you'd want to compress it as well. So let's compress it a bit, um, which controls the dynamic range. And then uh, let's do something with EQ. So if we just uh, restore ref default, put it on. Right, let's get rid of that little bit of low end with the filter. So just click in the red filter there. And we'll boost. Something like that. And uh, we're on a bus, we'll create to, uh, on the bus, we're gonna create a reverb. So if we just build a bus here, bus 15, and then in here we can put a effect space designer stereo and uh, we'll just use a kind of medium space say a space reverb like that and then if I turn up this dial we'll add reverb to it and we can EQ the reverb as well so take out a little bit of that low end make it a bit toppier so we get the top end in it and now we can actually hear it so that's your basic heartbeat there Let's take, let's take out, let's take out all the vocals for the minute. And work on the drums. Right. Let's listen to that kick drum. Okay, that's quite ambient, that drum kit. We can turn it up a bit. See the snare? Okay, so that's quite strange. That's got high hat hat in it as well. So we really want to separate that out. Uh, what we can do to do that is we duplicate the track, Command D on the keyboard, and then we highlight everything, move it down. On this one, if we just double click, Right, we've got kick drum on these ones. So if we just, on this top one, we'll just delete all of that. And then on this one, we'll delete all of that. We've now separated out the sound, so that's gonna make your life a little bit easier there. So we can just listen to this one. We've got these sounds, let's just get over here. It's a bit high hats. Use a pan a bit. So you'd want to do a bit more with this. Maybe uh, compress it. Use that reverb I made on bus 15. Let's see what it sounds like with the kick drum. Not sure on that kick drum, but anyway, that's, I'll definitely cho choose a different kick drum. this bass line. Not bad. 
add, but I'd say it needed to be an octave down. So we can just, uh, if I just change that an octave down. Well, that's, that hasn't worked. Well, that one. Highlight the part, the region. Yeah, and then down 12. See what that compressor is doing. Compress a bit more. There we go. So that sounds a bit better. Yeah, nice use of panning. Let's have a listen to this sound. Right, so there's bits of information at the bottom here we can get rid of. So again, use the filter, get rid of all that stuff. Increase the top. That's not bad. So let's go its own space now in the mix. Right, let's have a look at these piano chords. A bit soft. So look, there's a bit of attack on there. That's okay, nice bit of filtering. Get that compressor to do a bit more. It's got no compression on it. I can put the limiter on as well. There we go, a little bit brighter there, a little bit more present. So you need more variation, you need to um, use little stop ups to make interest. So. So we can go. Maybe you, on one of these, you can uh, get a hi-hat or a crash in there. So you might have something in the, or we can just use um, from the Apple loops. You can go over here and just type in crash. And um, some way crash symbol, here we go. And just drag that in somewhere. So that starts there. And that will just help. That's the kind of thing. I think maybe you really should change this kick drum. I mean, if we just look, if we just duplicate that. And if I change this to EXS24, and uh, in the EXS24s, you've got the um, factory, drums, percussion, single drums, kick drums, electronic kick drums, kick drum one. And now we can just copy this, copy this over, keep that sound, but also copy this one. Let's just check what note we're on. It should be on C1, that's fine. And now we can just see, we can just check which one we want. Just add a little bit more punch. That's good. I mean, that's a really good way of developing an arrangement is by layering sounds. So you might not have it at the beginning here. You could have say, well, we're not going to have it until there, so we've got a nice ambient, this back ambient stuff, and then we could do the same with the snare. You know, we could copy this and then have another snare sound here. It's just, it's just um, let's see, let's just if I just duplicate that one and call that snare, and then change this to. Individual snares, electronic snares, let's say, D1, and then um, just copy that snare bank, which is this one, up to there. I can get rid of this one. Let's see what that says. Got anything in there? There's nothing in there. <laughs> Typical. 
Just when you think you're safe or you've made a mistake, never mind. We'll just we'll make a snare pattern up here. Um, create a note. There we go. Make sure it's loud. Use a velocity tool. There we go. And that's going to be on the one, on the two, and the and the four, like so. And we'll just loop that. So like that. Here we go. There we go, just add interest by layering up sounds, putting in different variations here. So I've taken the loop out uh, of the actual poem because you basically haven't done anything with it. What you need to do is, first thing you could use is take out little bits you like and um, just isolate them and put them on different tracks or create a audio instrument, a, create a software sampler instrument with the sound. So, you know, for example, we could take that note, block, block, clock. Okay, so I'll just take those two and then I select them both using shift and then convert to sampler track using regions, C3. I'm just going to have two samples on here. Um, it's muted though, you don't have to, you can unmute them with control M. Um, but now I can play these and put effects on them. So uh, if I just do a simple effect like a delay echo. So So, you know, a lot more stuff like that, and that's easy enough to copy in. So that's really easy, creating um, sampler tracks like that. Um, what else can we say about this track? Um, yeah, I mean, the main things are the mix, you know, get those kick drums working. The vocals, they need some kind of effect. So you've done arpeggiated synth here. Let's see some variation in it. You know, so this alchemy here, it's really easy to automate. Um, it can be a bit scary that, just go on that one. Or you can use this, you can use the smart controls. If we go to the arpeggiated synth and highlight that, we should have smart control. Oh, that's it. There we go, there's the smart control. So what I can do is I can automate this, go into touch and... <laughs> recorded that put it back into read and that would record I mean they want to see real-time changes I mean that's kind of high-end stuff and they want to hear a decent mix and they need to hear variation see they can only mark you once on this line because they've heard it once you need to do something else with it in order for them to access those higher marks so um, it's fairly interesting. I mean, you've done obviously done a lot of work in it, and um, you know you, you've been careful with the sound selection and things. But we need to, you really need to look at your mix and make sure that it's as clear as possible. Okay, so good luck with that.